Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us this, this evening. I'd like to welcome you to the public meeting to gather feedback on the proposed changes to the Dallas Arl Clemenson Elementary School catchment boundaries. I would also like to acknowledge that we're meeting tonight on the traditional territory of the Shaquatnik people. I'm joined this evening by Vice Chair Wade, Trustee Grieve by phone, Trustee Sim, Trustee McKelvey, Trustee Jules, Trustee Ophie, Trustee Small, and Trustee Karpuk. Thank you, everyone. Due to the format of the evening, trustees will not be on screen during the presentations, but we'll be listening carefully to the feedback as presented, and we'll be back on the screen at the end for any closing comments or questions. Before I turn the meeting over to Superintendent Sullivan, I would ask trustees if they wish to bring any greetings or make any comment. Seeing none, before we begin, I would like to thank staff this evening for the extensive work done to date on the proposed revision to school catchments. The board understands this is a disruptive process to school communities and appreciate this extensive consultation being conducted to ensure that community views are heard before any changes are considered. We look forward to hearing from the community this evening. With that, I will turn the meeting over to Superintendent Sullivan. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, and good evening, everyone. And thank you for attending this public meeting regarding the proposed changes to the catchment areas for uh, Dallas Elementary School and Earl Clemenson Elementary School. I should say at the outset that these, uh, this meeting is being recorded and uh, it will be posted to the website for those who have not been able to be with us th this evening. They will have an opportunity to view the video and the public meeting at their convenience. I want to outline how we would like to proceed this evening. I will first ask Mr. Art McDonald, our Director of Facilities, to give an overview of these changes so there is an understanding of why staff is proposing these changes to the Board of Education. Following Mr. McDonald's presentation, I will then ask Ms. Trish Smiley, the Assistant Superintendent of Elementary Education, to comment on the educational impact of the proposed changes. And after Assistant Superintendent Smiley makes her comments, I will then ask the Secretary Treasurer, Mr. Kelvin Stretch, to make comments with respect to any financial impact that might occur as a result of these proposed changes. After Secretary Treasurer Stretch has made his comments, we will then begin listening to submissions on the proposed changes by those who have pre-booked a time on the agenda for this evening. Uh, those who have booked a time to make a presentation this evening have been allotted a 10 minute time period to make your presentation. And we would ask that you please respect the 10 minute allotment so that everyone will have an opportunity to make their presentations. And we have several presentations to be heard this evening. I will be given a, giving a two minute signal prior to the completion of the 10 minute allotment so that those making a presentation will have an opportunity to sum up and we intend to complete our meeting no later than 8.30 p.m. In addition to the formal presentations, if time allows, we will also be providing an opportunity for those of you who want to raise a question or make a comment through the chat function, which you can do on either Facebook or YouTube. We may not be able to answer all these questions this evening, but any questions that we cannot answer will be posted to the Dallas R.L. Clemenson consultation webpage, which is linked to the Dallas Elementary, R.L. Clemenson Elementary and District homepages. Your question uh, and a response to the question will be posted and the consultation pages with links to submit questions and comments will remain open until June the 4th. All questions and responses to questions will, re will remain viewable publicly throughout the consultation period. In addition to the public meeting this evening, I will also be meeting with the PAC executive of each affected school and our assistant superintendents will also be meeting with the staff of each affected school. All of the information and input obtained through these consultation meetings will be consolidated and presented to the Board of Education prior to the board making any decision on these proposed changes. As you are aware, all members of the Board of Education are present this evening to listen to your presentations, but I want to stress that no decision will be made this evening. Uh, the decision on these changes will be made at the public board meeting on June the 14th, and you can view that public board meeting 
through Facebook Live, the public board meetings begin at 7 o'clock p.m. That completes the outline of the process we will follow this evening. Director McDonald, uh, would you please provide some context to our consultation process this evening? Yes, thank you, Dr. Sullivan. So uh, Dr. Sullivan has already gone through the agenda for the evening. So I'll begin with the presentation. No, so I'm not seeing, uh, Director McDonald, I'm not seeing your video. We're seeing the slide, uh, we're seeing your uh, slide presentation, but not your video. There you okay. are. Hey, okay, thank you. Thank you. So a little background, school catchments are not permanent. Each school has a limited capacity in the neighborhood that it serves is constantly changing. Changing demographics and legislative changes can affect the enrollment of a school. Periodically, the Board of Education will, make, will review school enrollments relative to catchment areas and make changes where necessary. And the board is considering four catchment boundaries changes and the reopening of Ralph Bell Elementary for September of 2022. So as Dr. Sullivan mentioned, just to give some context as to where we see the district going, um, these are our enrollment projections from our 2020-2021 long range facility plan. And they are quite strong, quite robust. These equate to about 200 to 250 students per year. And I know, you know our September enrollments look quite strong in, in several key areas in the district. This slide shows our district-wide capacity utilization and capacity utilization is just the enrollment divided by the ministry defined operating capacity. So this takes into account all the areas of the district. In 2008, 2009, we were at 77%. This year in September, we were at 92%. We're projecting in five years to be at 98% and in 10 years to be at 105%. Now we've broken this out uh, to sort of reflect the areas we're looking at and these are Kamloops area schools. So in 2021, this September, we were at 116% at elementary. 97% in secondary in five years, we're projecting to be at 123% at elementary, 99% at secondary, and in 10 years, 133% at elementary, and 107% at secondary. I've got a couple of notes at the bottom just to indicate that the increased capacities of the Valley View Secondary Edition being completed by September 2022 are included as well as Parkrest Elementary reopening for February of 2024 in a new larger capacity school. Again, from our long range facility plan, we've identified areas with significant enrollment pressures. We have enrollment pressures in a lot of places, but these are the most significant ones. Westmount Elementary, again, you can see current capacity utilization, capacity utilization in five years, capacity utilization in 10 years, how many portables are at the school, and the percent of students in portables at this time. So we've got Westmount Elementary, Juniper Ridge Elementary, Pacific Way Elementary, McGowan Park Elementary, Dallas Elementary, and Dufferin Elementary. So Dallas Elementary, we're currently sitting about 131% capacity utilization projected to go to 165% in five years and 188% in 10 years. Again, for some context, we have uh, similar pressures at the South Shore Secondary Schools, uh, Sahali Secondary, South Kamloop Secondary and Valley View Secondary. Now as part of the Long Range Facility Plan, we, we look at how are we gonna deal with these enrollment pressures in what we call a neighborhood analysis. And I've kind of gone a bit more granular with this one. So for Kamloops East, um, in our ministry funded capital project submission to the ministry last year, we had a higher capacity replacement school for Dallas Elementary. So that would be replacing the existing school on the same site with a bigger school. But until such time as we receive funding for that school, we still need to deal with the enrollment pressures. And as an interim measure, we've recommended to the Board a catchment review for Dallas Elementary and R.L. Clementson Elementary. 
Now again, for the Kamloops East at secondary, we do have our Valley View Secondary Edition project in progress. Now district-wide um, for the next five years is kind of our five-year outlook. Um, till the school district receives capital funding for projects, the school district will need to respond to enrollment pressures internally as we have always done. So across the district, we're looking at potentially having to repurpose 22 rooms for classrooms. These are empty spaces in some of our rural schools. Um, they could be a music room, they could be an LART room. And we're also looking at adding 35 portables across the district. I mentioned a few slides ago, we have a capital plan that we submit to the Ministry of Education every year. And in our submission last June, we have new schools. We have an elementary school in Pineview Valley, an elementary school in Bachelor Heights, secondary school in Aberdeen, an elementary school in Juniper West, the K to 12 school in Sun Peaks. And in this year's submission, we'll be adding another school in Aberdeen East. And as I mentioned previously, we have a replacement school for Dallas Elementary, the highest, higher capacity in our capital plan. So for Dallas and RLC, um, Dallas Elementary continues to have steady growth as a result of the development in the eastern areas of Kamloops. And in order to create consistent and manageable enrollment at Dallas Elementary and RL Clemenson Elementary Schools, um, we will continue to have to add portables, particularly at Dallas Elementary in the short term if this catchment change is not uh, put into place. So the recommendation to the board is that a catch Mary change will be required for Dallas Elementary to keep the school within a reasonable capacity utilization. This catch Mary adjustment creates somewhat balanced enrollment and capacity utilization between the schools. Um, the word somewhat is in there because they will never be, I guess, consistent and exactly equal, but we are looking to try to share some of the pressure around to schools that do have some space. And this projected catchment change ships the Campbell Creek area from Dallas Elementary to RLC Elementary. Assuming all the students move based on this catchment change, approximately 102 students would be affected for September of 2022. There's two charts here. The upper chart shows the current enrollment projections if we do nothing. And I'll try to put my cursor, I hope you can see it. So Dallas Elementary was at 131% this September and growing out to 188% with enrollment figures going from about 416 to close to 600. The bottom table shows what we're projecting if this catchment change is implemented. So you see the change on, on Dallas, instead of being at 600 in 2030, we're projecting about 470. Then R.L. Clemenson also goes up above capacity, but currently when you look at the current capacities, R.L. Clemenson has capacity for about almost 100 more students than Dallas Elementary. Um, I apologize, I will need to try to shrink that down. Um, The red area is the current Dallas Elementary catchment area, which over here, I'm sorry, it's cut off on the screen. I'm not sure why. Campbell Creek is out here. The current RLC catchment area is in yellow. If we go to the proposed catchment change, you see the boundary just changes to shift around Campbell Creek. So Dallas is still the red area and RL Clemenson is the yellow area. And that concludes my report at this time, Dr. Sullivan. Thank you, uh, Director McDonald. Um, I'm now going to ask uh, Assistant Superintendent Smiley to have some uh, comments with respect to the educational impact uh, with respect to these changes. Thank you, Superintendent Sullivan. Uh, good evening. Uh, first off, uh, with educational considerations, the collective agreement defines the maximum class size for all classrooms in the district, and this is a maximum total by grade, as you can see uh, by the chart I have up here. 
The maximum number of students is also affected by composition, which is the number of students designated as requiring support for low incidence special educational needs. These designations lower the class size by one seat per class. Class size maximums changed in 2017, increasing the need for further classrooms for students as the maximum number of students uh, are lowered. During this time, at, uh, with, at schools with already high operating capacity, specialty spaces, spaces such as music and learning assistance rooms were changed back to general classrooms. Currently, in addition to increasing student enrollment, some schools required the placement of portables. Next slide, please. As a result of the catchment area proposed changes, no changes to the educational programs of Dallas or R.L. Clemenson are being proposed. In the case of R.L. Clemenson Elementary, it will remain as a K-7 school. To accommodate the increased enrollment of 102 students, portables may not be required, but this would be reviewed prior to school startup in September 2022. Dallas Elementary as well would remain as a K-7 school program. This school will decrease by 102 students. Two portables would remain on the site initially, and it's possible that specialty spaces will be able to be reclaimed at Dallas Elementary uh, as a result of changes in 2017 and increased student enrollment. Students uh, will not experience changes to secondary schools once they have completed elementary. Both Dallas and RL Clemenson elementaries will continue to feed into Valley View Secondary School. Thank you, and over to you, Secretary Treasurer Stretch. Thank you, Assistant Superintendent uh, Smiley, and good evening. As indicated previously, uh, this presentation will be posted on our website to allow you to access the link to the Ministry of Education's K-12 Operating Grants information. This site includes information for all 60 public school districts in the province for 2021-2022 school year, as well as information that goes all the way back to the 2001-2002 school year. Although catchment area changes do not generally have implications on district funding, I will share some basic information on how we are funded for our day-to-day -day operations, how capital projects are funded, including existing space, new space, and portable classrooms. Enrollment-based funding or per full-time equivalent funding is as indicated. Um, we have our standard school enrollment, continuing education, distributed learning, which is our online programming, alternate schools and homeschooling. The uh, funding snapshot takes place each year at September 30th in all school districts in the province. Next slide. In addition to enrollment-based funding, supplementary funding is provided on a per FTE basis in the following categories. Special needs, English language learning, Indigenous education, adult education, and this is for the non-graduated adults, and equity of opportunity supplement. In addition to the enrollment-based funding, supplementary funding is provided for unique geographic factors. So as indicated on the slide, we have a small community supplement, low enrollment factor, a rural factor, a climate factor, a sparseness factor, and a student location factor and supplement. So actually districts are not funded for space. Districts do receive an annual facilities grant, uh, which is used uh, for maintenance and upkeep of existing space. Also districts are not funded for portables. Portables are not funded because districts tend to add portables due to enrollment growth which uh, generates additional per FTE funding, which is needed to pay for the additional staff and supplies, uh, which may include the addition of portables if existing space isn't available. So the Ministry of Education approve and fund capital expansions and new schools. Once approved, districts are 
expected to contribute to the capital project on their ability to contribute. If school sites are required, a school acquisition charge must be in place. The district has been working with the city of Kamloops to have this in place for any uh, new purchases of sites going forward. Capital projects in the last 20 years and the district contribution um, are as follows. The NORCAN Trades Edition, uh, the district contributed $1.1 million. The Valley View Expansion, which is currently taking place, uh, the district's contribution is $1.75 million. And the Park Crest, uh, the for the expanded portion of the school, we're building the school larger than what was there originally prior to the fire. And that contribution is $300,000. So that uh, concludes my part of the presentation. So I'll turn it back to Dr. Sullivan. Thank you, uh, Mr. Stretch and Assistant Superintendent Smiley. Uh, so that completes the outline of the process we will follow this evening. Uh, so uh, we would now like to proceed with your presentations and we'll take them in the order in which they were booked. So when I call your name, I would ask you to please proceed with your presentation. I will give you a two minute signal when you have two minutes left in your time allotment so that you can sum up. Now, uh, we had a number of presentations uh, booked. Some of those, I uh, just was advised that some of those presenters have withdrawn. So I'm going to start uh, with the presenters that still have their name on the list. And if I miss anybody, you can uh, certainly let us know. So the first presenter I have is uh, Naomi Tweedy. So uh, Naomi, if you could uh, please begin your presentation. I can see your name, but you're muted. And I don't see your video. I don't know, you, you can use uh, only the uh, audio if you like, uh, or the audio and the video, that, that is uh, your uh, option, of course. I apologize, I'm new to the Zoom thing. Can you hear me now? I can, yes, uh, perfectly. So please proceed. Good evening, my name is Naomi Tweedy and I'm opposed to the proposed catchment change of Campbell Creek neighborhoods being sent to RLC instead of Dallas Elementary as it sits currently. My family and I pay Kamloops property taxes for three properties within Campbell Creek Village, a portion of which goes to the school district. In my opinion, the proposed change to catchment area of Campbell Creek Village and the boroughs is unfair. We specifically bought in this neighborhood based on children attending Dallas Elementary. When attending a kindergarten orientation meeting in 2019, at which schools of choice were present, I was specifically told that there were no plans to change the catchment area for Dallas Elementary. The proposed change in catchment area will potentially drive families out of Campbell Creek Village and the boroughs, creating an abundance of seniors, potentially drawing emergency services away from more densely populated areas of the city and destroying the vibrance of the neighborhood in the process. I have concerns regarding the increased time on the bus if students from Campbell Creek Village are being bused to RLC in Barnhartville. This increased time on the bus along a hazardous road is less than ideal for student safety and well being. It will increase carbon emissions and traffic with parents driving their children to and from RLC, and this road is extremely hazardous in the winter. In addition, I'm concerned that the longer time spent on the bus will negatively impact students' ability to participate in extracurricular activities. Furthermore, it does not seem in students' best interests to force them to orient with a new school when they already have established friendships, relationships, and learning at Dallas Elementary. Perhaps the school district could consider building additional learning space, such as a modular school or utilizing portables at Dallas Elementary, or if students need to be selected to go to RLC from the Dallas area, it should be in an area in closer proximity and bordering Barnhartvale, such as Pine Ridge area or neighborhoods closer to Todd Hill Road and Barnhartvale Road. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Naomi, for your presentation. And as I indicated, uh, this is recorded and uh, the board will have access uh, to it uh, and uh, they will consider uh, what you said prior to uh, making uh, their decision on June the 14th. The next presentation I have listed is Sean Chard. And Sean, I hope I'm pronouncing your last name properly. 
Uh, if I'm not, then please uh, correct me. And I can see your name. Uh, if you just unmute yourself and uh, you'll be ready to go. Yes, good day. Can you hear me? I can perfectly. So go ahead, please. Yes. Uh, sorry for the confusion. I was actually more question based as what uh, I was looking at. And if that's appropriate for this time, I can ask, uh, ask those questions or I can use the Q&A tab if you so like. No, we have time this, uh, this evening because we've uh, had some withdrawals. So please uh, go ahead and uh, ask your questions. If we can answer them tonight, we, we will. If not, they will be posted on the, on the link. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, so again, my name is John Chart. Uh, obviously, some, there's some common comments from most of the people that in this area in the catchment area that's being changed. Uh, obviously, the first commute and community to the RLC. Existing students will have to move and require transfer, uh, request a transfer yearly to stay. The mental health of yet another change to the last is the last thing that should be considered while the COVID environment and stresses are associated with uh, the changes of, uh, to our children. So some of the questions that I have is I was trying to look at some the surveys and the stats as to why our catchment area and considerably Campbell Creek and the boroughs has been chosen over other communities like Naomi had stated that have easy access, shorter commute uh, to RLC. Yeah, thank you. And uh, I'll ask uh, Mr. McDonald uh, to respond and why we looked at Campbell Creek as opposed to maybe some other areas with respect to uh, the, the uh, chain, proposed change in catchments. I expect that we were looking at specific numbers, but I'll ask Mr. McDonald to make comment on that. Yeah, that is part of it, Dr. Sullivan. Um, as, as I mentioned in my presentation, as, as best as we can, we're trying to somewhat balance out the pressure at the, at the adjacent schools. Um, we also, when we you know, define catchments, we try to look at discrete neighborhoods as best we can. Um, we do also realize these students are already on a bus and, and we do understand it would be a bit longer a bus ride, I believe about five minutes. Um, but yeah, it, it is somewhat down to numbers and trying to reduce the size at Dallas Elementary. So as you know, Assistant Superintendent Smiley mentioned earlier, we can hopefully get back some of the specialty spaces and things that have been lost based on the uh, enrollment growth over the last number of years. Thank you. Hey, Sean, if you could continue with other questions. Yes, I have a, I have a few more. Uh, so obviously Campbell Creek is one subdivision, but this also does re uh, remind you that this also affects the boroughs, which is actually a Dallas Drive uh, address here. Um, now with the amount of units and the expansion that's happening here out in the East End, there's only 19 more units being built out in the boroughs and there's no topographical room for any more uh, expansion of houses. Um, obviously people come and go and families move. Um, so with the Dallas school needs, obviously it needs an infrastructure update. Uh, excuse me, I have notes. I just lost them for a second there. Yeah, it's okay. Go ahead, take your time. Where other, yeah, so where other communities considered that do have that easy access? Um, obviously you were saying five minutes, but realistically, if you're thinking wintertime driving, there is only Todd Hill at Barnhart Vale Road, and we are the furthest distance from that access point, um, where other communities looked at. I think we looked at we looked at a variety of different uh, ways to do this. But as Mr. McDonald outlined, we looked at that particular community and the fact that children were already being bused, uh, and uh, we thought that probably that would give us the numbers that we wanted. Uh, we, when you look at the projections with respect to the school. Uh, when you look at the capacity for the school and where it's headed uh, over the next five and next 10 years, uh, we have to do something. I don't think we can leave it the way it is. Uh, I think doing nothing is simply not an option for us. Uh, if we continue, we will not be able to have uh, students, for example, have gym time. We will not be able to organize that. There'll be pressure on washroom facilities. We will lose a number of those spaces that Assistant Superintendent uh, Smiley outlined if we continue to add portables 
So it's just not a viable situation educationally. But to get to your point, uh, we looked at the numbers that we wanted to try to achieve uh, to uh, decrease the enrollment at Dallas, and that's why we selected that particular area. I've heard the, the comment that Naomi made with respect to busing and the increase in time. So what we'll actually do as a result of that question, we'll go through it and we'll actually time the amount of the bus trip time and how much how much of a difference it is uh, compared to what what there is now to Dallas compared to what it will be at Earl Clemenson. So that's something we'll have to go through in time and that will consider the stops and so on that we would factor into that so that we have an answer with respect to that. Okay, thank you. Uh, I only have one more question and uh, I pulled a comment, I guess. And, uh, um, so with that, most of our students and our other families' children, we do have our children enrolled in after-school programs and so forth, and the pickup points are at Dallas. Now, I know the one that my daughter's enrolled in doesn't go to Barnhart Vale, and then that means we would have to find another after-school program or daycare. Has that ever been considered? I ha I've heard that, but I haven't had a chance to actually consider it. But since you raised it, we will look at that particular issue and post a response to your question. But I don't have an answer for that right now. All right. So, yeah, I guess in closing, just my opinion is, is that I don't believe this was a. Obviously, the, the way the, the process was done out, I don't think that everybody was given the stats and how the decision was come to. Uh, which should be posted. And I had troubles finding that myself, and I don't know about other families. Um, I, I personally don't agree with this, this catchment change. It obviously creates a lot of problems. As a military family, we, we move a lot. And when we like to look for to sustain stability with our children, we don't want to be moving them from school to school and then have to try and rely on a transfer request on a yearly basis, which is not, not fair to our children at, at the end of the day. Um, the other problem that I'm seeing right now too is that we're going to create some social uh, problems with our children having to change schools, make new friends, and this is going to play on the mental health and well-being of our children, especially in the COVID environment that we're having to deal with at this moment. I think change at this moment is something that we should really be careful of doing. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chard, for taking the time to uh, express your concerns. The board uh, is listening. I know they have heard them, and uh, we have a couple of uh, aspects of your questions we have to respond to, and we will do that, and we will post them on the link. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. The next presentation we have is Greg Caldwin. And Greg, I hope I'm pronouncing your name properly. If, if not, please uh, correct me. And you can start when, uh, when you're ready. I can hear me. I can. So please go ahead. Hi. Um, <clears throat> our children have been at Dallas uh, Elementary since kindergarten. Um, Dallas Elementary is our, our community school. It's just down the road. Uh, our kids have a support network with the friends, teachers, and administration at Dallas Elementary. Seems that Campbell Creek area was chosen to go to RLC because it was the easiest. Um, the entire Campbell Creek community would have to drive right by Dallas Elementary to get to Todd Road and then get up to RLC. <clears throat> um, both myself and my wife work and we rely on daycare to do school drop off and pickups. Um, our daycare does not go to RLC. <clears throat> um, and many other parents would be in the same boat. Um, <clears throat> just Keep the long story short, we just strongly oppose this oppose this proposal. Thanks, thanks for your time. Thank you, Mr. Coleman. We'll we'll look at the issues that you've raised uh, and Mr. Chard raised with respect to daycare, and uh, we'll look into that and we'll post a response, as I said, uh, uh, with respect to the link. Those are the the three formal presentations that I had listed. Now, uh, there were some that withdrew. Is there anybody else there that? we've missed that had filed uh, for a formal presentation tonight and has not had an opportunity to do so. And everybody here is shaking their heads no. So I think what we'll do now is we'll get into some of the questions that have been raised and we'll try and respond to those. And we have a couple of questions from uh, Facebook and YouTube and we'll get into those as well. The first question, uh, 
I have one child in Dallas already. Once my youngest starts kindergarten at RLC, is the application to transfer my oldest going to be automatically accepted? Is there a chance each kid will be in a different school? If so, that's extremely problematic to say the least. What we're gonna do is all, the, all our efforts are gonna be made to ensure that sibling groups are able to attend the same school. So we are going to make an effort uh, to not split uh, siblings up. We are going to make an effort to try to keep them in uh, the same school. There were several questions about busing. Uh, we had a couple more tonight. Uh, so Sherry, I'm just going to ask you to listen to this question and then if you could respond uh, to some of it this evening. All of the students in Campbell Creek are currently bused uh, to school. So the change for these students is that their bus ride would be slightly longer than it currently is. We currently have two buses that pick up from uh, CCB to Dallas Elementary. Without additional stops, this takes about 12 minutes. Going from CCB to uh, RLC with no additional stops will take about 17 minutes. So those are statements. So Sherry, maybe you could uh, comment about that. Is that anything further you need to say with respect to that? Good evening. Yes, I um, I seen this question earlier and that is my response to it, Dr. Sullivan. Okay, so uh, we're looking at, uh, so it would increase five minutes from 12 minutes to 17 minutes is the, is the answer to that question. That, yes, that is correct because we won't be stopping anywhere else. They'd have a direct, they'd have a direct line to RLC. Yep, thank you. Third question, has School District 73 taken into consideration the mental health implications of moving children <clears throat> from their community school? If so, what supports might be put in place to address this concern? And will the students with individual education plans, IEP be, IEPs be expected to move from their community school? So just response, the men mental wellness of our students is of course a tough priority for us. The, the impacts of changing schools will affect each student differently, I think it's fair to say. Uh, as requested, additional counseling supports will be put in place for individuals if they require it. In addition, whole school measures will be required to ensure that students experience a sense of belonging. So schools will develop these plans to ensure that students connect to new friends and feel part of their new school. So certainly there will be considerable uh, work that will be done at uh, R.L. Clemenson to ensure that children that uh, make that move are going to be welcomed and will become integral uh, to that school. And will the students be, uh, with inclusive education plans be expected to move from their community uh, school? The answer is yes, students with inclusive educations will move to the new catchment. If required, additional transitioning support will be provided to students uh, based on the IEP. So we make sure that they have uh, the supports that they have now that those supports will continue. We have some other questions uh, that have been raised uh, through the chat function. Um, this is an enrollment uh, projection question, Mr. McDonald, with respect to portables. Uh, and the question uh, says enrollment projections have 179 students and plus 26 to RLC over the next nine years. Assuming this catchment change is made in 2030, how many portables do you estimate each school will have? So that would be both Dallas and RLC. And I think I heard uh, Assistant Superintendent Smiley say that uh, the impact because of the increased capacity that's available at RLC, there will be a minimal uh, number of portables expected at RLC, but we may have some additions to Dallas. But Mr. McDonald? Yeah, the, the question was asking, uh, based on the proposed catchment change, how many additional portables would be at each school for 2030? So with Dallas being at uh, 416 students now, and uh, we're putting another portable in this summer, which would bring the total to three, if we leave those there over the long term to get them some specialty space back and then they have to get converted back into classrooms to get to the enrollment of 470, we'd probably be looking at another three portables at Dallas. 
RL Clemenson with a capacity of 411 going to 476 in 2030. We'd be looking at uh, three to four portables at uh, RLC based on the projections. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McDonald, for that. Hopefully that answers the question about portables. This question, uh, how will the changes be staffed? And uh, that is governed by the collective agreement. So all the staffing is governed by the collective agreement and Assistant Superintendent Smiley will be speaking to the staffs at both Dallas and RL Clemenson. So that issue I'm sure will be discussed, but it's governed by the collective agreement. So this question, the district knew about all the new subdivisions being built. Why did they not start expanding Dallas years ago? There's two uh, answers to that question. Number one is the, uh, what we predicted as far as enrollments were concerned. I was uh, with the district in 2002 when we made the projections and we projected that the enrollments would decline as they did until 2014, which is what happened. And we projected also in 2002 that the enrollment would then increase starting in 2014, which it has. We also said at that time that we had significant excess capacity in the district. We closed schools, but we still had excess capacity and we're confident that we could accommodate any future expansion and enrollment. However, there is a piece that we did not anticipate and could not anticipate. And that was a decision by the Supreme Court of Canada in 2017 around class size and class composition. And Assistant Superintendent Smiley des described the impact. So what that meant, that Supreme Court of Canada decision, and it's not a criticism, by the way, of that decision, because there's a lot of good things educationally that flowed from it. But one of the side effects of that, it was it immediately added 4,100 teachers to the province. And in this district, it added 98 teachers, and 90 of those were classroom teachers. So immediately, as a result of that decision, we had to add 90 classrooms. And that decision really absorbed any excess space that we had. So that decision combined by the increase, that decision, which we could not predict and did not predict, combined with the increase enrollment that we did predict and did happen as we predicted, those two things could to combine to increase the pressures that we have now. The other thing I want to add is that we're not the only district in the province that is in the situation that we describe here. Many districts are in exactly the same position as a result of what's happened with respect to the increase in classroom space that is required. And uh, as a result, there certainly is a competition for uh, capital infusion into districts. And our board has been very active and has been aggressively pursuing the capital infusion that we are going to need that Mr. McDonald has described in the years ahead. Uh, question, next question. Can anyone tell me why realtors still tell us the district is in progress of building a new school, K-12 school at Orchards Walk? Uh, that's new to me, but uh, I can, of course, speak for realtors, but Mr. McDonald, do we have any plans to build a school at Orchards Walk? Uh, we do not, Dr. Sullivan. So that's the answer to that question. So I don't know why realtors would be saying that because we do not have plans to do that. We have some, uh, it might be because Mr. McDonald, we have some space, we have some land out there that we own, do we not? Yeah, we have another property um, across Todd Road out in, out in Dallas. Um, we, we do own that property, but that is not at Orchard's Walk. Okay, so we do have, and that might be the confusion, we do have another piece of land out there, but Mr. McDonald has already described uh, what we want to do and that has replaced uh, Dallas Elementary with a bigger school. But certainly our best guess is that is many years, many years off into the future uh, because we have so many enrollment pressures with respect to new schools that are required that Mr. McDonald has outlined. So I think realistically that is a number of years off into the future before we can get a bigger school to replace uh, the present Dallas Elementary School. This question, if this change goes forward, do families in Campbell Creek have any other options? Uh, there is a transfer option and uh, we have to be careful with that. Uh, that's going to depend on space uh, that uh, schools have. And uh, if there is space uh, after the catchment change, then as in any other catchment area, students could apply if there was space allotments. And I don't know whether or not there would be, 
they could apply for a transfer uh, to Dallas Elementary. That's going to be pretty difficult, I would assume, though, for the lower classes uh, where the uh, numbers in the class are minimal. They're, they're smaller numbers and they're, they're fixed compared to, say, the in, uh, inter intermediate grades where the numbers are larger. So I would think that there would be a lot less flexibility and a lot less option for open spaces in the uh, primary grades. Uh, next question, has there been any consideration for a middle school opening at Ralph Bell to address uh, Dallas uh, growth? Um, what we're looking at with respect to Ralph Bell, when we looked at uh, the pressures at Juniper Ridge Elementary, uh, that's a process that will be working parallel to this process to open Ralph Bell to relieve uh, some of the pressures that are going to be occurring at Juniper Ridge elementary school and try to distribute some of that enrollment from Marion Schilling as well. But uh, we are not considering a middle school opening at Ralph Bell. We're trying to relieve some of the elementary pressure at, uh, at Juniper. We also have the addition to Valley View Secondary and that will significantly reduce some of the pressures at the secondary schools. But Mr. McDonald, I don't know if you ever, you want to comment on that, but I don't think we've considered uh, um, a middle school at Ralph Bell because we don't feel it would help us with the immediate problems that we have at Juniper Ridge. Yeah, all your all your comments are correct. The other the other comment I would make is is when we look at the middle school options, we start looking at uh, some of the sports as well as um, junior shop classes and those kind of things. So Ralph Bell has an elementary sized gymnasium, which really wouldn't be suitable for the lower secondary school grades and, and there's no space for some of those other uh, elective courses like shop courses. Thank you. Yeah, it's an elementary school and we would have to renovate it uh, for the purpose for which it was originally intended and middle schools are just a completely different uh, concept. A middle school in Dallas, uh, that would need to be, that would be responded to in the, in the same way and uh, uh, Dallas, of course, is an elementary school and a middle school. We did have one, we do have one middle school and that's Brock and Brock, of course, as you remember, was a secondary school. It went from eight to 12. So it was relatively easy uh, as far as the facility is concerned to convert that to a middle school, which is a seven to nine uh, school now. Uh, that would be a lot more difficult and almost impossible to do that with an elementary school, I assume. Will there be a requirement at RLC to place the Campbell Creek students in their grade appropriate class together so that they have a friendly face to help with the adjustment for the first year? So maybe Assistant Superintendent Smiley might respond to that. I'll, I'll just repeat the question for you. Will it be a requirement of RLC to place the Campbell Creek students in their grade appropriate class together so they have a friendly face to help with the adjustment for the first year. Uh, thank you. Uh, it is possible that could occur. Uh, we are obligated to follow the collective agreement, which has some composition guidelines, uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, meaning we have, first of all, class sizes, and then we have uh, outlined the number of uh, students with special education designations that can uh, go into each class. So those uh, uh, cause some limitations in how schools can be organized. Outside of that, uh, we do ensure that we prioritize uh, academic and social emotional growth of our students. And uh, in the case where we have students that are new to the school, that, that would become something as a consideration for uh, classroom placements for sure. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So we would be sensitive to that and uh, we would be working with the with the principal and the staff at RLC as well to try to accommodate those and we'd be talking to parents as well uh, who whose children are being moved to RLC with respect to that. Another question from Sean Chard. Has the board considered verifying the addresses versus students actual catchment area they reside in? They will find that this might help redistribute the numbers. I know of multiple students that live in RLC that go to Dallas and vice versa. Any student that lives out of catchment, of course, has to apply for a transfer. And uh, that transfer would have to be approved before they could enter a school that's out of catchment. We don't intend uh, for those uh, families that have in the prop in the past 
actually applied for a transfer and had that transfer approved, we do not intend uh, to overturn that transfer as a result of these, uh, these changes. So if there is a legitimate process that they went through to transfer, uh, we would not be upsetting the, that transfer, those transfers with respect to that process. I'd have to look at those numbers too to see how many students we're actually uh, uh, talking about here. My uh, information is that it's a minimal number. Uh, I do not see any other questions uh, that we have. Uh, we will, as I said, this video will be posted and everyone will have an opportunity who wants to view it to see it. There will also be other opportunities to uh, post questions on the website and we'll respond to those questions and we also will respond to any questions uh, more fully that we could not answer fully uh, this evening. So uh, with that, I want to uh, thank uh, those of you who took the time to make a presentation and to be with us uh, this evening. I am now going to uh, turn things back to uh, Chair Kershaw uh, for any comments that she would like to make or uh, any comments that board members uh, might uh, like to make before we uh, complete this e the evening. Chair Kershaw. Thank you, Superintendent Sullivan. I'll just wait a moment while all the trustees are pulled back in. I think we're all here. So I would just um, one more time like to thank staff for uh, putting these public consultations together. And, um, oh, sorry, I, I was missing a trustee. We also have trustee Grieve um, joining us by phone, but doesn't appear on the screen. Trustees, do you have any closing comments or questions before we conclude for the evening? I just want to take a minute and uh, say thank you to all the people who presented and obviously care quite passionately, not only about their own families, but, uh, you know, the families who are at the schools, their neighborhood, the community, and, and the big full picture. These are awkward, hard, hard, hard conversations and uh, taking the time uh, to be a part of them is, is really helpful. So I just want to thank everybody who, who is participating and listening. I would echo that absolutely. Uh, it's very important that we hear from the communities and uh, I think we did hear a number this evening uh, and uh, would like to thank everyone for watching and attending and remind everyone again to go and provide your feedback on our website. Thank you very much for the evening. Is, was there any other trustees? Sorry, Trustee Ophi. Oh, oh, you're just waving. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful evening.